So this was, this idea came from a abstract that was published in ASH 2021 uh, by Dr. Benjamin Diamond. And so they, they basically found that uh, chemotherapy could lead to like a heterogeneric um, environment. Uh, so basically just a lot of different um, cancer types instead of just one. Um, so we wanted to basically look at our data and see w what we found. Now we didn't go to the extent that they did. They did uh, genome sequencing and at HealthTree, what we do is we um, uh, acquire patient um, medical records through um, uh, their health data that they um, consent and they, they give to us. Um, so we, we analyze it. <clears throat> and so we looked at uh, mutation, the risk level, and then secondary uh, disease burdens. Um, it, was, it was actually pretty interesting. So we divided into two groups. Basically, one group, the patients received high-dose melphalan, or they got a stem cell transplant, and the other group is, is that they didn't. And so we looked at um, their uh, mutation burden before, what their risk level was, and then we looked at those things after. Um, <clears throat> And uh, we actually found that there wasn't a significant difference between the two groups. So whether they were on high dose melphalan or they just received chemo, uh, they kind of had the same result. And that was, was kind of interesting to us. I think we kind of suspected that high dose melphalan would lead to a uh, higher disease burden, higher mutation rate, all those things. Um, <clears throat> but we didn't see that. Um, however, we did see that the high risk level was largely increased um, regardless of if the patient got high dose melphalan or just a chemotherapy. And so instead of pointing the finger at one or the other, the high dose melphalan or the chemotherapy, um, I think they're both culprits in, um, you know, leading to secondary mutations or um, producing a, a, a kind of a, a um, more genetic vari uh, variety, uh, so to speak.